to buy news. I am expected to go here and command for today. We are going to interview two North and South War veterans, Pep Scott from the North and Eddie Owen from the South. Finally, we have a special guest, Professor Rocky from Princeton University. Let's get to it. Good morning. I'm Lacey McGraw, and we're here in Pennsylvania with Pep Scott, a great war veteran who fought in the American Civil War. How are you living in the North? The North has lots of factories and mills. Our economy is based on manufacturing. About 400,000 immigrants, mostly Irish and German, were in the U.S. at all times, and most of them worked in the mill, where jobs were plentiful. But not only immigrants work. Some boys as young as four years old would work. My litter of nine children would work for several hours just to earn a, earn a few meager pennies. They thought they could earn a lot until they realized only people who own factories get rich. Oh, that's sad. That was very informative. Now we head to Atlanta, Georgia to interview the veteran from the South. His name was Eddie Owen, a courageous bunny in the war. Are you there, Bubba? The few coins they earned supported our family a lot, including my busy wife, Margaret. The North was more industrialized, so we had less of needs for slaves. Many people became rich by owning factories. If you just work there, you will get almost nothing. If you own a factory and a mill, you will become very, you will become very rich. Wow, really? So the South only owns plenty of things, ten percent of the factories. Yep. That's surprising. I didn't know that. Well, thanks, Mr. Scott. Now back to you, Sprinkle. Yes, thanks, Sprinkle. So, Eddie, how did life in the South? Good. Well, can you give me more details? Oh yeah. In the South, we had lots of tobacco plantations. The South economy was based on agriculture. We had nice farms. My family owned the biggest plantation you'd ever see. Really? Cool. How big was it? Bigger than you could imagine. Tobacco was the main crop to grow in the South. Also, the South owned 84% of the farms. My my farm was so amazing. People would come from all around the world just for a little tobacco to my new plantation. It was the best for miles around. We earned so much money that only 25% of the wealth was in the South. Such a disappointment. And I thought I earned a lot of money, so my family decided to check out the triangular trade and the, and the cotton. Well, what did you say? Oh, I was so angry. I think it was up to And did it pay off? I guess you could say it did. The cotton was sharp and it hurt the slave's hand. It took a while to clean the super sticky pot. A slave could only clean about a pound of cotton a day. He complained it was almost impossible to clean. That's until Mr. Eli Whitney appeared. What did Mr. Whitney do? He was a hero. In 1876, Eli Whitney invented a cotton chip. It was a machine that removed, removed seeds from cotton. Things could clean as much as 80 pounds of sticky cotton a day. And now that's a load of cotton. What was all that cotton for? The cotton was for the North clothing. What about the triangular trade? We didn't do it, but I'll tell you about it. For masters in the South, which would be sold to Europe and shipped there to make final goods. Who was rich and who was poor? Plantations owners were rich and the slaves were poor. I was rich because I was a plantation owner and the slaves did everything without pay. That's cool. Well, now let's wrap things up. Thanks for letting us interview you. My pleasure. That's you, Sprinkle. Well, we have one more special guest, Professor Rocky from Princeton University. We studied the American Civil War all his life. Are you there, Frederick? Thanks, Sprinkle. Hi, Professor Rocky. We see you are an expert in the Civil War. Well, of course I am. I live in a mansion with four swimming pools, both in there, and land with me, and we nine cataracts. So we have a real tough question for you. As in like in the North and South due to a Civil War? The North opposed sleep, but the South don't sleep for very necessary. Different in lifetime, the, the North sleep. The north side of the U.S. compared to the south, but arguing if you still have slavery or not. These arguments split the U.S. Into, into two different groups, the Confederacy and the Union. Since the President Abraham Lincoln did not approve of the Confederate States having their own government, and the Confederacy did not want to go back to the man in the Union, there was no war. Do you have a Confederacy with America or is it all or is it its own country? Well, they decided to have the war was having slip 
Thank you, Professor. No problem. We have one last question for you. Maybe don't be sure. How do the issues of power, wealth, and moral morality influence the Civil War? The Civil War is greatly influenced because of the issues of power, wealth, and morality. Like you said, <laughs> the issue of power was Abraham Lincoln was president, so he was in power. So he, so he issued the Emancipation Proclamation. That freed all the slaves in the South. Wealth influenced the Civil War because rich people had more land in the South, so, so the need of slaves is greater. When the North said it was wrong, this angered the South. The North morality was what slavery was wrong, while the sl uh, South sense of morality was that slavery was okay. So, how, so is how power worth morality influences the Civil War? Thank you, Professor. Let's wrap things up. Thank you, Professor Rockman. Well, that's it for today. Come again and watch Bunny News.